Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. Before I introduce the computer, I want to introduce this new filming area. Pretty classy looking. At any rate, let's go ahead and take a look at the laptop that we have today, which is another ThinkPad. This is the T510. The ThinkPad T510 came out in January of 2010 and it was the second generation of the T500 line. Some significant improvements that were made from the T500 was of course the adoption of the Intel Core i series. There were Optimus models that could handle up to four screens at a time, which was pretty impressive for the workstation crowd. It was also featuring a 16 by nine ratio display, which is great because if you need a very respectable, cost-effective machine that you can be guaranteed to have a decent screen, it's this guy right here. Some of the things that were lost over the T500 is there was no longer a Ultra Bay battery. Uh, it did move to the Ultra Bay Enhanced uh, series. You could, however, get a slice battery, and this model includes an eSATA port. As I mentioned earlier, this came in the uh, Intel first gen uh, Core i series, so it was available in an i3, an i5 and an i7. Uh, the i7s had cooling issues due to the 45, 55 watt parts and generally are not seen, um, but you can do the modifications if you so choose. In terms of GPU options, you again had three. You either had the Intel GMAHD built-in option with the integrated chips. You had an NVIDIA NVS 3100M, which was a 256 or 512 megabyte card. And then you had NVIDIA Optimus. Some other specifications that are worth noting is that in terms of RAM, you were looking at eight gigabytes maximum, and that would be two sticks of four, and you're looking at uh, 1066 DDR3. So let's just do a quick tour of the ports, and then we'll talk a little bit more on specs. Along the front, we have the latch that opens up the laptop. Along the left-hand side, we have the CPU fan exhaust, DisplayPort, VGA, 2 times USB 2.0, our eSATA port, FireWire, smart card, and a physical Wi-Fi kill switch. Along the back, we have our barrel plug for power, we have a modem, and then we have our USB 2.0 always on. And then along the right hand side, we have the Kensington lock slot, we have network, we have our optical bay, which can be swapped out for a hard drive caddy. We have our headphone microphone combo jack, our express card slot, 34 millimeter, and then of course an SD card slot beneath it. Looking on the inside here, we have a 15.6 inch display. And this came in three varieties, a 1366 by 768 panel, a 1600 by 900 panel, and a 920 by 1080 panel. And as I mentioned earlier, all three of those were LED displays. They have pretty respectable contrast ratios for the time. Batteries came in three varieties, a six cell, a nine cell, and a slice. The six cell was 57 watt hour. You had a nine cell battery that stuck out the back, which was at 94 watt hours and a slice, which was 94 watt hours. So you could get a lot of battery power that would make this an incredibly mobile station. Keep in mind that that is battery technology from 10 years ago using 10 year old CPUs. So even though you have potentially with the nine cell and the slice, almost 200 watt hours, you're not going to get incredible battery life like we would today. All right. So we're going to go ahead and disassemble this laptop, which I actually did earlier. So you're going to hear me in voiceover for the next little bit. All right, so let's start off with looking at removing the battery. It's a simple tab, push it off to the side, battery comes out, really easy. We're going to put that off to the side and we're going to get a screwdriver here. And then we are actually going to remove the optical bay first. This does have its retention screw, so that has to be spun out and removed. This is often missing on these models because this screw is actually kind of a nuisance if you're hot swapping the bay. It does stop the catch from being actuated, so we push that up, push that tab, and out the drive comes. Simple as that. Next up, we are going to go ahead and access the hard drive. So again, that is the removal of the battery, and there is a single screw that keeps a cover in place. We remove that cover, the drive is there in a caddy, we pull the tab, and out the drive comes. 
that caddy can be reused to upgrade your drive. You put it back in and install it as you would any other drive. So the next thing we're going to do is remove the cover for the RAM, two screws, and we have our first RAM slot. The other RAM slot is on the other side. We can also access one of the keyboard screws that we need to remove that, and that allows us to do a keyboard wiggle, remove the keyboard, and detach the ribbon. From here we can access one of the RAM slots as well as a few other components. So once we remove that and we remove the top case, we have access to literally everything, including the express card, Bluetooth, CMOS battery, our Wi-Fi card, our uh, MSATA expansion bay that is usually used for a 3G card but can be used for an MSATA drive. We do have our other RAM slot on the other side of the board. We do have access to the CPU heatsink, and that whole unit can be removed up and out of the machine. And if we take a look at the cover, we can see all of the cabling that handles the trackpad, the buttons, as well as where, if there was a fingerprint reader, where it would be installed and the punch outs for it. Lastly, just a cute little thing, the speaker grills always look bigger than they really are, but as you can see, the speakers themselves are actually very, very small. All right, now that we're back, let's just do a few things to wrap up our experience with this machine. We're going to go ahead and boot it up. And this is running a solid state drive since you saw the teardown footage prior. So it has a very respectable boot time, even for a first gen i3. Pardon me, even for a first gen i5. And as you can see, we are in. Our screen looks fantastic, especially for the time. The refresh rate's not gonna necessarily play nice with the camera, but it is bright and it's crisp and clean displays colors good at all angles. And even if you're in the dark, you've got a think light and web camera up at the top to really uh, nail this as a package. So if you're looking for a 15 inch laptop in the year 2010 and you are strapped, uh, quite frankly, for cash, or if you're just looking for a fun little project machine, the T510 has plenty of life. It has the older style keyboard, which many still pine after. And if you're just looking for something for web browsing, uh, content consumption, emails, documents, this is gonna do it for you. It really, really will and it will do it at a very affordable price point. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoy this sort of content and would like to see more, I'm gonna encourage you to do the big four. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you are notified the next time a ThinkPad like this is featured on the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.